I saw a video um, pop up in my feed on YouTube, and yeah. it is. Um, hold on, I need to. I need another channel name. It's a news. It's um, <clears throat> KHQ, and the channel name is John Webb. And this is a Idaho-based news organization. And the title of the video is How Much the Case Against Brian Koberger Costs Taxpayers. Now, okay. in this, um, they are talking about just the way it's presented it feels shady to me but you guys can let me know what you think um they say that so far the case has cost idaho taxpayers hundreds of thousands of dollars and that koberger has been in the lataw county jail for more than 14 months on your dime oh, yeah. uh, so they called the treasurer and they requested basically the finances. Okay. Uh, they want to know how much this is costing Idaho taxpayers. Mm -hmm. Well, here I took some screenshots and we I also hope they knew what they were doing and they included the additional payouts from the state that the school got and everything, because that was, uh, that's already like two and a half mil, you know, for the investigation. Right. Yeah. right. The cops got a million and the school got a million. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the cost of the investigation well, the state actually got another 500 K on top of it. I think it ended up being 2.5. Oh, dang. Yeah. So, they sent it to the treasurer. The treasurer talked to Bill Thompson and Bill Thompson said, I do not believe we're able to finalize a decision on this request. I'm concerned that the release of this type of information could run afoul in IC 75-124-1B um, and the court's non-dissemination order. Now, that code is uh, deprive a person of a right to a fair trial and or an impartial adjudication. <clears throat> then they talk about um, that it's costing $210 per day to house Brian Koberger, at least an inmate in the county jail. Okay. And that $210 per day to house an inmate comes to uh, $76,650 a year. And that since Koberger has been booked, it has cost the state $88,000 to house him. Um, and they know that at least 962257 have been spent on the court and housing him, I guess, this year or like since he's been arrested or whatever. Mm. And they said they didn't they are waiting for judge judge's response. Well, we have a court filing. Okay. And this is the response um, from judge judge. It says a public records request was submitted to Lataw County clerk on February 26, 2024 and was subsequently forwarded to this court for review and response. The request was to examine and or copy records pertaining to the total cost to date of the case against Brian Koberger, including both defense and prosecution and any other costs this case is required. Pursuant to Idaho Code Section 74102, this response is specific to records of the Lataw County Judicial Department and more specifically records for which the court is the custodian judge as defined in Idaho Court Administrative Rule 32 K3C. First, Idaho Code Section 74102 does generally give the public the right to examine any public court record of the state. However, that code that, you know, is supposed to give a fair trial exempts from disclosure records contained in court files of judicial proceedings, the disclosure of which is prohibited or under rules adopted by the Idaho Supreme Court, but only to the extent that confidentiality is provided under such rules. So, um, he, the... And obviously, this is like these are sealed to preserve the right to a fair trial. Um, mm -hmm. 
So they also cite another rule that allows the judge presiding over a case to request that the administrative district judge appoint another judge to consider and conduct any hearing on the motion to decide on the motion. However, Idaho Code Section 74104-1B exempts from disclosure records contained in court files of judicial proceedings, the disclosure of which is prohibited by or under rules adopted by the Idaho Supreme Court, but only to the extent that confidentiality is provided under such rules. Idaho Court Administrative Rule 32 governs records of the judicial apartment examination and copying exemption from and limitations on disclosure rule 32 one wait i 2 e allows a judicial record to be sealed to preserve the right to a fair trial sealed court records are not subject to examination inspection or copying by the public idaho rule criminal rule 12.2 addresses a defendant's ability to file motions requesting additional defense services Rule 12.2D allows the judge presiding over a case to request that the administrative district judge appoint another judge to consider and conduct any hearing on the motion and to decide on the motion. On January 6, 2023, this court issued an order appointing resource judge for this case. Thus, a separate judge is tasked with a decision related to any defense motions requesting additional defense services. This court has no knowledge of the costs associated with the defense of this case, nor is this court the custodian judge for records pertaining to the total cost to date of the case against Brian Koberger. This is to ensure that any decisions made by the court are not in any way influenced by the costs of the case. On January 13, 2023, mm -hmm. The resource judge tasked with evaluating and ruling on any defense request for services issued an order sealing documents pursuant to the Idaho Court Administrative Rule 32I2E to preserve the right to a fair trial. Therefore, all documents and materials related to costs associated with the defense's request for services are sealed and exempt from disclosure at this time. Additionally, the Judicial Department does not maintain any records related to the cost of the state's case. In addition to this response explaining why the Lata County Judicial Department, or let, what do people say it is? Lata? Mm -hmm. Department cannot provide the total cost to date of the case against Brian Koberger, attaches the be above mentioned order appointing resource judge and order sealing documents. ACAR Rule 32I. Additionally, the order approving appointed counsel's hourly rate, which is not a sealed document and is contained in this court's case file, is attached. And it <clears throat> is addressed to John Webb from KHQ TV. And it gives the hourly rate of Ann Taylor, which is $200 per hour. And J.W. Logston, uh, Chief Deputy of Litigation, um, is entitled to 180 per hour. Yeah. And there's nothing about the prosecutor's pay. Interesting. So I wonder what the angle was where they were trying to go with that, though, because uh, why why pull the funds just because they want wanted to try and come out and be like, oh, my gosh, we just need to convict him already. Like, what was the angle? So in that in that news thing, that news clipping, <clears throat> they show from the hearing where and it was the last hearing, not not the most recent one, but the one before that where Ann Taylor says, I'm nervous telling you I'll be ready by 2025. I'm nervous mm -hmm. telling you that. Mm -hmm. um, and they're like, look, this is how much it's cost to date. As, as far as what we know, we're waiting on, you know, that additional information from to see if the judge will approve it. Um, but this is how much we know of right now, just based on what we can find. And, um, they don't like we're 14 months into this and they don't like if they go to trial in 2025, that's an additional 14 months. And it could be even longer than that. Like we don't even really know when they're going to go to trial. Yeah. So like this is costing the Idaho taxpayers a lot of money. Yeah. And yeah, it is. Yeah. I 
but what's the point of talking about it in the way they did? Like it, yeah, he's that's what I'm he's asking. being prosecuted on your dime and being held in jail on your. Is this like to advocate the public to make them want the death penalty so that they don't have to pay anymore? I like to I hold don't know. him that's in jail. What I'm trying to understand because like that what what somebody's looking up applies to everyone. It's not specific to Brian Koberger. So um the only thing the only changes in cost to Brian Koberger is how much the defense uh and the prosecution are making on this case. It, that is higher than normal. Um but other than that it doesn't matter. He's just taking up a spot in a jail where somebody else would have taken it up. There's no difference. Yeah, but they want to know what the court proceedings and everything revolving around the case as far as I get the it, trial. They want to know that. This is our judicial duties. Yeah. So I I don't see a point in it other than trying to like make it seem like it's some bad thing. You think there's a way to calculate how much money this case has made, Idaho? Oh, I, I don't. I have no idea. I have no idea, but it's probably <clears throat> quite a bit. You think? No, oh, yeah, yep, I do think so. How does a state and the people of that state gain money from a criminal, like a capital case like this? Is it like the media coverage, earning money that way? Is it people traveling there to do media coverage? All like the above. All the above. All the officers' meals and whatever they're paying uh, for when they were there during the, the investigation. Um, any local businesses that are, you know, supporting like large lunches, like snack tables, things like that, so that the officers can continue doing what they're doing. Uh, I mean, there's a lot. There's a there's a lot. There's a lot of different things. Um, hotel rooms. Um, you know, there's a lot. Yeah, and I'm sure. I mean, the public absolutely has the right to know what their tax dollars are going towards. So I'm not knocking that at all. I think that is important. Everybody should know where their tax dollars are going. <clears throat> However, just the way it was stated in that. Um, in that news clipping, just it really rubbed me the wrong way. I was like, what is going on here? What is their intention? And I, I want to play like that little clip, you know, where he says it like it, it's on your dime. Like you can just. Well, he has been in the Lake Talk County Jail now for more than a year. Brian Koberger, the suspect, prime suspect, accused of killing four University of Idaho students in November of 2022. He requested a public defense attorney to represent him in court, costing you, the taxpayers, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Good evening. Always good to have you with us on the 630. I'm Sean Owsley. In tonight's 360 coverage, we're talking how much you're paying as a taxpayer in the state of Idaho for this singular case. It's been nearly 14 months since Koberger's first court appearance in the state of Idaho. He's been in the Lake Talk County Jail since January 4th, 2023, on your dime. Today, nonstop locals John Webb set out to determine how much the case has cost the people of Idaho to date. Good evening, John. You did get some answers. Yeah, John, good evening. At this point, it's hard to nail down a specific total on this case. I did some digging in Lake Talk County and statewide, but the gag order in the Koberger case continues to be an issue in finding what would normally be public information. But tonight, we can definitively say it's already cost at least several hundred thousand dollars. Earlier today, I called Lake County Treasurer B.J. Swanson to see how much this case has cost the county. She replied in an email with the response from Lake County Prosecuting Attorney Bill Thompson. It reads in part, quote, I do not believe we are able to finalize the decision on this request. I'm concerned that release of this type of information could run afoul of IC 75124-1B and the court's non-dissemination order, end quote. Well, that specific state code that he cited says it would deprive a person of a right of a fair trial or an impartial adjudication. Thompson referred me to send a public records request, which I submitted. 
I was told it would be handed to Judge John Judge. I have yet to hear back. The Capital Defense Fund is a great tool to help in these types of situations. Kootenai County Commissioner Leslie Duncan serves on the Idaho Capital Defense Fund Board. The fund is comprised of counties that wish to take part. Essentially, the fund reimburses counties that are pursuing a capital crime. For a county to expend all of their available funds from now until October 1, it's probably going to be unlikely, maybe not impossible, but after that, the state will pick that up. At this point, we're not entirely sure of the grand total that Leyta County has spent, but what we do know is how much has been expensed from just the capital fund. $874,477.06. That according to Commissioner Duncan. Again, it could be that the total cost is higher, but we don't have access to that information right now. Beyond court costs, Koberger is being housed in the Latah County Jail. That too, costing you money. According to the Sheriff's Office, it runs them $210 per day to house an inmate. That covers everything from housing to food to medical costs. $210 times 365 days out of the year would put taxpayers at $76,650. Since Koberger was booked, that would cost taxpayers nearly $88,000. So we know at least $962,257.06 has been spent. And not only has the trial not yet started, we don't even have a clear idea on when it might start. You'll recall the January 26th hearing in Leyta County, prosecution wanting to move forward with the trial this summer. But Koberger's public attorney, Ann Taylor, has something different in mind. I'm nervous telling you I'll be ready by summer of 2025. I'm nervous telling you that. Summer of 2025 would be an additional 14 months from right now, adding potentially another $900,000 toward this case pre-trial. Regardless, Commissioner Duncan reinstated the importance of a thorough trial. I want the public to remember that any capital crimes uh, case that we really want to do our due diligence and make sure that uh, if we're going to sentence a citizen to death, that we overturn every rock and we do our due diligence to make sure that everything's done properly. And Sean, if Judge Judge does agree to release the exact total of how much this case has cost you, we'll pass it along to you here on the air and on nonstoplocal.com. In the newsroom tonight, I'm John Webb. John, thank you for that in-depth report there. Coburg's next appearance in court Wednesday. John will be in court with any new developments. And for more of our 360 coverage any time of the day, it's nonstoplocal.com, Spokane tab, and the 630 section. I don't know. Like... I don't know what his intention was behind saying it that way, but it doesn't seem positive. Yeah. And I think a lot of, in a lot of ways, people, um, that's one justification for the death penalty is like, it costs money to house this awful person. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And if you kill them, you don't have to pay that anymore. Mm. Yep. So I'm just curious if that has anything to do with it, but you guys let me know what you think the motivation behind it is. Is it just like wanting the state, like the taxpayers to know what their money's going towards? Is it, you know, calling out the judicial system? Is it, you know, pro death penalty type thing? I'd like to know what you guys think about it.